Roll. Whitley County Judge. Clerk will still call the roll. Glenn Whitley County Judge. Here. Roy C. Brooks, Commissioner Precinct 1. Present. Marty Van Ravensway, Commissioner Precinct 2. Here. Gary Fickus, Commissioner Precinct 3. Here. J.D. Johnson, Commissioner Precinct 4. Here. Constitutes a quorum. Thank you. Our invitation today will be delivered by uh, Bill Parks, Senior Pastor of the Davis Boulevard Baptist Church. Thank you, sir, for coming out today. After the uh, invocation, please remain standing for our pledges. Thank you, Judge Whitley and Commissioners. Let's bow our hearts in prayer. Father, we come before you this morning. Father, we know that you have established government. You have ordained them, Father. When we come before you this morning lifting up our leaders as you have instructed us to do so in prayer, uh, Father, we call upon your name and ask that you would guide this meeting this morning. Father, give wisdom and understanding. And, Father, that you would guide the uh, outcome of all that takes place in this meeting this morning. And, Father, we know that you said blessed is the nation whose nation is the Lord. And, Father, we call upon you. We profess your name this morning. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, I pledge allegiance to the Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the court, we have three items or three agenda items that uh, we'll discuss with you real quick. Uh, the first one is under the administrator section, item 9A2. This concerns the uh, TIF issue uh, with the city of Richland Hills. There's a revised court communication. Uh, Ms. McMillan will be uh, making that presentation. We'll point that, that issue out. Um, also under the administrator section, item 9A15 which is the out-of-state travel requests. There is a corrected uh, precinct number that we have included in that. Under purchasing, item 9J1, this is the sale of recycled paper. This is bid number uh, 2010-064. There is a new court communication in your file this morning as relates to that. And then finally, members of the court, we're going to do something a little bit different this morning. Uh, we do have a briefing item that uh, we're going to be presenting to the court. However, the briefing is going to occur in 504C. You might have noticed the big boards that were out in the hallway uh, before the start of the court meeting. We've moved them. We'll be moving them into room 504C to talk about the historic courthouse uh, bell tower. What we intend to do is to, once we get to the briefing section, we intend to take you into closed session first and then come right back out and we'll do the briefing in 504C. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. <coughs> Court members, you have before you the minutes of our April 20th meeting. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, we have a couple of proclamations. Uh, the first is uh, Conservation Day, and I'll read that into uh, to the record. Whereas people across Texas wish to live in harmony with the natural resources and leave a better earth for our children and grandchildren, and whereas conservationists across our beautiful state work hand in hand with citizens of Texas to conserve natural resources and to create a healthy land, and whereas leadership for conservation of natural resources on private land is provided by a partnership that includes soil conservation districts, state conservation agencies, other federal agencies, tribes, and the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service, and whereas the Natural Resources Conservation Service and its predecessor, the Soil Conservation Service, have been helping agricultural landowners in Texas meet their, con their conservation goals, and whereas the Natural Resources Conservation Service has established an important, there's a whole lot of conservation in this thing, <laughs> conservation partnership with farmers, ranchers in Texas, and whereas now is the time to recognize the contributions of the Natural Resources Conservation Service and its partners to increase awareness among the state's citizens of the importance of natural resources, 
Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby proclaim April 27, 2010, as Conservation Day throughout Tarrant County in honor of the 75th anniversary of the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Be it further resolved that we encourage all citizens to celebrate this special observ observance and to reflect upon ways that together we can contribute to a healthy environment and make Texas an even greater place to live, work, and raise a family. In witness whereof, we have set our hands and caused the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this 27th day of April, 2010, and I'll move its approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And I believe we have Randall Henry um, and also Michael Brooks here. Uh, please come forward and we'll uh, get a picture Thank you all very much for coming. Out. And then we have a, a resolution of appreciation. Uh, I know County Clerk uh, Bobby's retiring over there, and so we've got our, our uh, resolution of pre appreciation for him, and I'll move its approval. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. And Commissioner Brooks, I believe you have a proclamation. Uh, yes, sir, and with your permission, I'll read it into the record. Go right ahead. It's regarding National Infant Immunization Week and Vaccination Week in the Americas. Whereas, vaccines are among the 21st century's most successful and cost-effective public health tools available for preventing disease and death National immunization levels are at or near record highs for most vaccines, and most vaccine-preventable diseases have been reduced by 99% or more since the introduction of vaccines. And whereas immunizations are one of the most important ways parents can protect their children against serious diseases, and children need a series of vaccinations starting at birth to be fully protected against 16 potentially serious diseases. And whereas, in the years since its inception, National Infant, Infant Immunization Week has served as a call to action for parents, caregivers, and health care pro providers to participate in activities and recognition events to increase the awareness of immunizing children before their second birthday. And whereas the week of April the 24th through May 1st, 2010 has been declared National Infant Immunization Week, 
to help ensure that children have all their vaccinations by the age of two, and whereas this year the United States will join with the Pan-American Health Organization in support of Vaccination Week <laughs> in the Americas to promote immunization in all countries of the Americas, and whereas during the week of April 24th through May 1st, Immunization Collaboration of Tarrant County will have an Immunization Information Day on April 27th at Tarrant County Public Health WIC locations to help ensure that children have all their vaccinations by age two. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the Commissioner's Court of Tarrant County, do hereby proclaim the week of April 24th through May 1st as National Infant Immunization Week and Vaccination Week in the Americas. And further, Tarrant County encourages parents and children's caregivers, public and private health care providers, businesses, government agencies, national organizations, community-based organizations, and service groups to advance the health of children by, ensure, by ensuring early and on-time immunization against preventable childhood diseases. In witness whereof, we have hereunder set our hands and caused the seal of Tarrant County to be affixed this 27th day of April 2010, and I move its approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Uh, with us this morning is Terry Andrews of the Tarrant Immunization Collaboration, who will receive this proclamation. Thank you to the commissioners. Yeah. Um, this is wonderful. The immunization collaboration has been in existence for 20 years in Tarrant County, and through your support, we work with the Tarrant County Public Health Department as the provider. Anita Colbert, who's with me, has been with the collaboration for 20 years. Um, couldn't have been done without her. Pat Heyer is with the Tarrant County Medical Society Alliance, and they are a huge financial and volunteer support for the collaboration. Last summer, during August, during all those massive back-to-school immunizations, the collaboration provided immunizations for 6,000 children. Over 16,000 doses of vaccine were given in the month of August. And that's just the beginning, and we're gearing up for this coming August. Um, but thank you for this recognition. Thank you. Thank you. Before we move on to the consent agenda, I want to uh, uh, recognize Ann, and again, thank you, Ann, for the job you did last weekend, I know, with the uh, uh, race, or race for the Cure. And then also we have our Employee Appreciation Day coming up uh, uh, next month, coming up shortly. And then uh, also in June, and I wanted to, I got a call, and I've talked with the folks out at the Rangers uh, on June the 23rd is Tarrant County Day at the ballpark, and I thought what we would try to do is begin now talking about Ranger, you know, Red, red Day, and us all uh, dressing in red and uh, showing up out at the ballpark uh, for uh, the June 23rd uh, ball game, and actually have talked. I know, Jack, it's not Arkansas red; it is Ranger red. Yeah, and uh, but we'll we're going to try to do that and encourage not only Tarrant County employees but uh, also just anybody from Tarrant County that uh, will show up that day and 
Uh, again, uh, Jamie Adams from the Rangers has called, and uh, I think uh, we're going to have some different things in store maybe this year and maybe see if we can get some uh, good discount prices on some tickets. And so we'll begin talking about that now and continue to talk about it and really try to uh, maybe encourage everybody to show up in red that day. And, um, and see if Glenn can make the plate with the first pitch. Well, you know, that's kind of one of the things that I've been thinking about. <laughs> and and one of the things that we may try to do, uh, I always throw it. <laughs> well, we may let somebody else, and that might be kind of what we're going to talk a little bit about, is maybe uh, uh, either have a contest that for everybody who goes out there will draw a name out of the hat, and that will be the person who gets to <laughs> throw out the first pitch. Yeah, that kind of will make you nervous, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, well, and then uh, either that or we might have, you know, maybe one of our oldest employees or <laughs> longest tenured employees. Longest tenured, maybe not oldest. Um, but, you know, there's any number of, of avenues we might go down here to, uh, uh, to figure out who gets to throw out that first pitch. But, I've, you know, I've been privileged to throw it out for a couple of years, but it's maybe time to... Uh, pass that around and let somebody else have the opportunity to bounce it off the ground a couple of times before it gets to the front plate. You have to be present to pitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do have to be present to pitch. That, that, that's, that's true. Uh, but anyway, begin talking it up in your departments and in your different areas uh, June 23rd again, and uh, we'll look forward to having a great day out at the ballpark. With that, we'll move to the consent agenda. Move approval of the consent agenda. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Public hearings. Patricia. Good morning. Good morning. We have two public hearings today. The first one is to receive citizen input into the 2010 Consolidated Action Plan. This plan covers uh, CDBG, home, ESG, and um, that's it for a total allocation of $5.9 million. There's no action needed on today's public hearing. This concludes a 30-day comment. The action plan has been placed um, throughout Tarrant County and the commissioner's offices as well as on our website. So. At this time, I'll open the public hearing and ask if there's anyone here wishing to uh, talk to uh, this particular item. There being none, then we'll close the public hearing and move on to our second okay. item. Thank you. We will submit a formal uh, application to the Commissioner's Court within the next two weeks on that. Our second um, public hearing is on the five-year action plan, and it covers our priorities for um, housing, which is rehabilitation for homelessness, which is the maintenance of existing services, homeless prevention and transitional housing, for community development, which is basic infrastructure replacement, handicap accessibility, and senior citizens centers. We also have a priority for special needs, which is the removal of architectural barrier, barriers for disabled households, and for affordable, affordable permanent housing for elderly and disabled uh, individuals. Also, um, one of our priorities is affordable housing for people living with AIDS. One thing we did add this year is, um, under community development, is transit-oriented development. The rest of, the, of our priorities have been really in place for the last 10 years. There's no action needed today. This concludes a 30-day comment period. And then open it for public comment. This is a public hearing, so I'll open the public hearing at this time and ask if there's anyone here uh, wishing to speak to this matter. If there are appearing none, then I will close the public hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Your Honor, we're going to ask that uh, the court receive and file the public hearing. Uh, so moved. Second. A motion is second to uh, receive and file items 8A and B. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Thank you, Your Honor. Members of the Court, if we can go to the administrator section item 1. We're requesting that the court approve the issuance of tax exempt limited obligation revenue bonds by the Tarrant County Cultural Education Facilities Finance Corporation to the MRC Crestview uh, in the amount not to exceed $35 million. This is a project, uh, a retirement community project, which is located in 
Ryan, Texas. It already exists there. It's, it's an addition to uh, their current uh, facilities. Also, they are going to retire uh, about $2.5 million worth of existing debt on those facilities. Uh, MRC Crestview has uh, provided us with a letter concerning our hub policy, and, uh, and they have also uh, notified us that they do not have any restrictions on current or future use of properties for either health or government. Move approval. <clears throat> Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our members, court, we go to item two. Ms. McMillan is going to present this item. Judge, commissioners, uh, you're being asked today to consider participation in the City of Richland Hills Tax Increment Financing Reinvestment Zone Number One, known <coughs> as the Baker Boulevard TIF. The City of Richland Hills established the Baker Boulevard TIF zone in January of 2009. Um, as you can see, um, the TIF zone goes pretty much the full length of Baker Boulevard from just west of Roof Snow all the way up to um, 820 at Booth Calloway Road. This zone was established to encourage the development along Baker Boulevard and to transform Baker Boulevard from what it is now, a pass-through highway basically, to an urban boulevard with a main street feel. And this would create a more appealing environment for business and community growth and attract retailers and commercial along that, uh, that zone. In September of 2009, the TIF board met for the first time and approved the final project and financing plan for the zone. And then in January, representatives from um, Richland Hills came before the commissioner's court and presented that final project plan. As shown uh, here in the project plan, um, we are estimating that the increment within the zone is to, uh, will create approximately $86 million in new value over the 20-year life of the zone. And this will generate approximately $7.7 .7 million in funds to pay public project costs, including um, aesthetics uh, along Baker Boulevard, such as landscaping, lighting, sidewalk drainage improvements, and curb and gutter improvements and also will fund um, a portion of a, a JPS medical clinic also within the zone. This investment um, in the public improvements is expected to facilitate, as I said, $86 million worth of um, new improvements with a total value of um, the zone after the 20 years of approximately $130 million. As the participation sets forth, the county will be paying 75% of the incremental taxes generated from within the zone into the TIF fund through December of 2029 or until our total deposit has reached a cap of $1,488,402, whichever occurs first. They're also asking the hospital district to participate also at 75% or until a cap of $1,284,857 has been deposited. Again, most of the increment deposited by the hospital district will go toward the um, construction of a, a clinic within the zone. Tarrant County College District is planning to participate at 50% of their increment, and the City of Richland Hills is contributing 100% of their property tax increment and also an eighth of a cent of its sales tax increment that is produced within the zone. Today, we are asking commissioners to take two actions. First, to approve the um, resolution and participation agreement that provides for the county's participation in the Richland Hills Tax Increment Financing Reinvestment Zone Number 1 through the payment of up to 75% of the incremental tax revenues produced within the zone as set forth in the agreement. And second, to approve a recommendation to the Tarrant County Hospital District Board of Managers that the hospital district also approve participation in the Richland Hills Tax Increment Reinvestment Zone Number 1 um, at a rate of up to 75% of its incremental tax revenues. Okay. I've been working with the city, I guess going back about a year and a half on this, and um, it's a great opportunity for them to take an area that uh, has got a lot of potential, it's got a fabulous location, um, and truly turn it into to, uh, something that's a, a, a great improvement for them and for all of us. So. I would move for approval. Second. We have a motion to second. 
Any discussion? <coughs> Vote. The motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Stable. <coughs> We have one item for the court's consideration this morning, and that's we're asking to approve the release of $129,967,000 of collateral as listed in your attached court communique. Move for approval. Second. A motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mr. Lynn. Good morning. Good morning. We have two items for the court this morning. The first item we're asking the court to receive involve a personal agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion to second to receive and follow the personal agenda. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Our second item we're asking the court to approve a waiver of terminal benefits for the magistrate court. Uh, the magistrate is losing their court coordinator. She's retiring at the end of this month with 400 vacation hours. Uh, the magistrate is requesting a waiver effective May 3rd. The fiscal impact uh, after salary savings will be approximately $4,100, excluding fringe benefits. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? <clears throat> Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Good morning. Public Health has two items for your approval this morning. They are both being funded by uh, the WIC Women, Infants, and Children Medical Food Supplement Program. The first item is approval to purchase a vehicle for WIC. Move approval. Second. A motion is second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. The second item is a lease agreement with MVM Services for the Tarrant County Public Health Department's Euless Wit Clinic. And we are we have outgrown the old facility and have been looking for quite a while and are very happy to have found this new location. What is the term of the lease? Uh, I believe it's for three years. It's actually for five years. Five years. years. From two thousand June two thousand ten to two thousand fifteen. why is it so front loaded on those first three months? It's Oh, because it's it's built out. Uh, we can rarely find space that is clinically suited to our needs. Uh, they have we have to have exam rooms and sinks in every room, and so th uh, the first three months is to pay for the build out. Did, uh, did and then it, a, it it goes back down to. Do we have anybody like a realtor <clears throat> advising us or working? Uh, the reason I'm asking, we're paying about twenty dollars a foot for that space. Does that include taxes, or do we pay taxes? I know we're the county, but we're leasing, so we're, I'm assuming we're paying taxes what? on that bill. It's all rolled. It's, it's, it's a all triple net. net. Huh? Is it's it a rolled into the a, rent? It's a triple net issue. Triple net. Yes. Well, that triple net means we pay the taxes, mm -hmm. insurance, and no, I mean, maintenance. I'm sorry. We all of that issue is included in the rent. Okay. Okay. Do we use a realtor for things like this? Because typically a three-month period for recapture of uh, build-out expenses. That's, that's real quick. That's real quick. Isn't, we, but it's generally it's stretched out over a longer period of time than that. Over the term of the lease. Yeah. I don't believe that we use a realtor. However, in, in, in WIC-related issues, I think that we front-load those, those leases pretty much since WIC is the one who pays for that, and, and there are funds available for that in the WIC program. Can I build some buildings for us? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't even joke. Uh, <laughs> and I guess I want to go back to this $20 a square foot again because, I mean, I want to be sure I understand. First off, we shouldn't be paying any taxes, I wouldn't think. Yes, you do. On yes, lease you do. They're not exempt from taxes because we occupy it. They still own it. Yeah. Yeah. So we have to. But isn't, the, I thought that there was, Again, what you're saying is, is, is so if it's totally a, uh, if a facility is totally occupied by a governmental entity, uh, then we don't, they don't get any kind of an exemption off that. If it's a for-profit operation, if it's a business, they have to pay taxes on that. 
Well, I know we get some of it back, but I'm not sure that that's where I'm. How many square feet is this? It is. 25, 60. Okay. Any other discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Before you get away, back on item number one, is that a, some sort of a hybrid vehicle or are we uh, looking at some sort of a? It's a Ford Focus. I think that's, again, some sort of a. Excuse me. Hybrid. I just hope that they we're looking at folk uh, a hybrid. Hybrid. They also focus. make other. Well, I think that may be make more traditional. Let us hybrid. let us check on that. <clears throat> I just hope that we are taking into account. There's also cog money that is available for purchasing of of uh, hybrid vehicles that I know that we're not that is available that we haven't utilized. We purchased quite a few vehicles last year. With and in fact, we spent a lot of money. Yeah. And used it, all we could. And yes, we did. In fact, we bought bought vehicles for this year out of out of that also. That money is no longer available. The LIRAP money is no longer available for for hybrid vehicles for governments. So, uh, but we'll check to make sure that the last meeting of the COG there was an indication, and maybe it was heavy equipment or maybe it was other stuff. But there is there's money available that we're not using from a government standpoint, and therefore private folks are picking it up. Uh, because we're not. Now, again, it, that may not be for purely just automobile type purchases, but I just want to make sure that we're checking on that before we, and that if there's an opportunity to get some of that money that we're doing that. Sure. We'll check on that. And aside from the availability of, of dollars to assist in the purchase, it's just good policy for us to be uh, looking at ways to uh, Clean the air. And we this. are in a non payment <coughs> area. That? I thought that was just our policy already. And I'm it's our policy, shaking. but unless we follow it, it's not worth very much. Well, we'll I think we'll, the focus is a hybrid vehicle, to be honest with you. Well, some of them are. Okay. Yeah, some of them are, and some are not. We'll, we'll, make, we'll look at the fleets that are available, and if there's a hybrid that can serve this purpose, then we will acquire that hybrid. Okay, thank you. Excuse me. We have a vote with no motion or second. Mm -hmm. Really? We need a motion Which one? second. The one you just voted on. This issue. This hybrid? No, we didn't. Yeah, we didn't even talk about the hybrid. That was that was item number one, which we passed a few minutes ago. This, I went back. I made the motion. No, the lease agreement. On the lease agreement. On the lease agreement. Yeah. All right. Move to approve the lease agreement. It's going to be another one of these ones we're going to go back and look at. What item are you on now? We're now on, on 9-I-2. Two. Two. <coughs> I'll second. We have a motion and a second. We'll vote again. Passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if I can take just a second to introduce somebody that's with me today. We've had a graduate student. She's doing a dual degree with... UTA and UNT School of Public Health, so she's getting a master's in nursing and public health, which we're excited about. Jan Lachesky, if you'll stand up. Um, she's been working for many years at um, THR Harris downtown in the NICU and uh, electronic medical records. So we've been real glad to have her with us this semester. Right. What Thank are the you. prospects of keeping her in the family since we spent yeah. so much money on her this semester? <laughs> We certainly try with every student we get. So. Mm. Thank you. All right. Mr. Beecham, come on down. <laughs> Your Honor, the members of the court, just as a point of information, we have an existing contract in place for every hybrid vehicle known to mankind. It's an active contract, and we spend a lot of time doing that. We have a little bit of everything that's ever been considered a hybrid on, on contract. I just hope that every vehicle we buy, we look at buying hybrid first, and if we can't, then there's a reason, whether it be power or whatever. I mean, I do understand that there are certain vehicles that that may not work for, but in our environment, I hope that that's our first choice is a hybrid, and then we go from there 
other opportunities. That's precisely the point, Judge. We can have all the purchasing contracts and all the policies in the world, but if nobody's going to enforce it, then we haven't done anything. I agree. We also have. Well, I guess what I'd like, uh, any time we get a, we approve a purchase of a vehicle, if it's not a hybrid, I'd like to have some indication as to why we chose not to buy a hybrid. Just remind, and we will, Your Honor, and just to remind uh, the court that when we went through the process of acquiring that large fleet for two years, the monies that we had, uh, we made sure that we, we bought everything from patrol vehicles to constable vehicles to everyone else. We made sure that, uh, that those were hybrids because, quite frankly, the funds paid for 50 percent of the value of the automobile. My precinct got a vehicle out of that deal. We're very pleased with it. We also have four items for reconsideration this morning. First item is a bid award, a bid award recommendation for our bid number 2010-064, the sale of recycled paper. The recommendation would be to award on a pre enterprise basis, selecting as the high bidders uh, Green Star Recycling, $80 a ton, Paper and Recycling Solutions at $202 a ton, and Corrugated Services at $161 per ton. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Mm -hmm. Item number two is also a bid award recommendation for our bid number 2010-059. This is our annual contract for a coal milling machine with an operator and a helper. Recommendation to award on a per enterprise basis, awarding the turnkey projects to Dustrod Incorporated, cutting loading and watering to Texop Construction. Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Item number three is another bid award recommendation for our bid number 2010-051. This is our annual contract for electronic fire alarm and sprinkler alarm inspections, backflow preventer testing, uh, plus miscellaneous maintenance and repairs. Recommendation would be to award a pre-enterprise basis, awarding to Automatic Sprinkler of Texas and Texas Fire Protection Specialists. Move approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. <laughs> our last item is item regards to our RFP number 2010-056. This is our annual contract for fleet fuel card management services. Our recommendation would be to select as our primary vendor Mansfield Oil Company as our secondary vendor fuel man of DFW. We're also ask, asking the court for an extension of 60 days of the existing contract with Fuel Man of DFW. That existing contract expires May 16th. The reason for this request is to allow the smooth transition for the 10 other entities that are piggybacking off this contract and utilizing um, 4,281 fuel cards. Move approval. Second. Second. We have a motion to second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Transportation, while you're coming forward, I want to, uh, we've got the National <coughs> Association of County Engineers in town this, uh, this week down at the uh, convention center at Sheridan, and our folks have kind of headed that up, and you've done a great job, and I know everybody's been real pleased with uh, with the way everything's gone, so congratulations. Thank you, and thank you, and uh, Commissioner Brooks for visiting that yesterday. We appreciate that. You look quite a bit different. Is that why Joe's got a tie on today? I was, uh, I was going to apologize for my standard uh, dress because we are helping with that effort down there. They, as part of that requirement, they like for us to uh, dress in a cowboyish fashion. This is about as cowboyish as I get. <laughs> I would wear the big hat, but probably wouldn't be able to see around it. So, anyway, <laughs> with that being said, um, it is requested that the uh, the Commissioner's Court approved the Community Rating System application to FEMA. Uh, the National Flood Insurance Program's Community Rating System, it's a voluntary incentive program that recognizes as and encourages community floodplain management activities that exceed the NFIP minimum requirements. The three goals of the Community Rating System are to reduce flood losses, facilitate accurate insurance ratings, and promote the awareness of flood insurance. With your approval, we will submit this application to FEMA, and upon their review and approval, uh, any citizens located in the, in the unincorporated areas of Tarrant County with flood insurance will be eligible for a 5% reduction on that insurance. Move approval. Second. 
We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, appointments. I'm going to uh, appoint, make an appointment to replace um, Steve Montgomery on the hospital board uh, with Charlie Powell. And so, uh, excellent appointment. Thank you. Excellent appointment. Has Charlie agreed to do this? He has. <laughs> he has. Okay. He must not know what all it means. So we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Any other appointments? You have before you the claims, including the addendum. Move, Move approval of the claims, including the addendum. Second. We have a motion and a second. <clears throat> Any discussion? Please vote. Motion passes unanimously. Um, at this time, we will adjourn our open meeting and proceed to uh, our closed session to discuss items exempted under sections 551.071, 072074076, and 087 of the Texas Government Code, after which we'll come back and then we will uh, move into 504C for our uh, briefing item on the old clock tower. <laughs>